WA has Chada Joe, Mike. Um, I'm assuming he said he means Aaron and Elon also. I'm no, noticing. yeah, we're out. We can't help. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm Come noticing. on, Elon. Let's go join another channel. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm noticing that home theater guys also end up having better rigs uh, for uh, the oh. oh. Then two channel stereo audio files. The two channel guys don't use subs, no room measurements, etc. Why? Huh. Okay. Um, I've not noticed that. I haven't have, noticed that. No, I have not. That I could mean, be because I, my channel is more like I do a lot of two channel stuff, but <clears throat> I haven't really noticed. I've actually kind of noticed the opposite for what it's worth. Just, so. <laughs> I've seen people like just say that they don't want to run subs. They want to hear the speakers. They don't run room correction. They want to experience the speakers, how they are and this, that, and the other. Um, to me, it seems like it's your, your, um, your, what, what is it? What is it? You're paddling upstream. Mm. I think depending on how your room is like, wouldn't you want something room correction wise to, to help? It all depends, of course, yeah. if your room is, is a think. shit show. Yeah, I think or some of those guys, I mean, they, I guess I classify them as purist. You know, they, they don't want to introduce DSP. They don't want to add a subwoofer to enhance the bass. They believe the, the speaker should take care of that for them. And I'm just of the opinion, I think every system um, can benefit from a subwoofer, whether it's two channel or home theater. Um, and uh, it just takes a load off the, the speakers. They handle all the lower frequency, even though if you're not digging down super, super deep, I think you still benefit from having a dedicated subwoofer, even in a two channel setup. So, yeah. You yeah, I just, uh, I, sh I should clarify. I I'm sorry. I was only addressing the first, the sentence. I didn't catch the part about the no subs. No. So that I believe that's accurate, but I was just saying that from what I see, I don't know that I would say home theater guys have better rigs like yeah, not necessarily you know yeah, yeah I, I think it's kind of it could be closer to even uh what, what i tend saying. to notice is a, a lot of people that have home theater setups because a lot of people are more oriented toward the budget end it seems like mm -hmm. like with home theater so th they make sacrifices in areas that maybe i wouldn't you know what i mean we have so, to, we have because to, they need more equipment we have, to have like 15 channels speakers <laughs> yeah exactly that yeah. does make sense it's rough uh elon what are your thoughts on that uh, I mean, yeah, it's, you know, there are those purists out there who just want, you know, big old tower speakers and a really nice, you know, preamp and amp maybe <clears throat> for their hi-fi system. But I mean, just because I'm, you know, I haven't been in the home theater space for like decades or anything, but, you know, the more I'm getting into it, the more I do appreciate room correction the more I do appreciate a subwoofer, whether it be just very subtle subwoofer present. Sorry, I just point, I pointed because Michael loves it when you say woofer, but okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I know, now I'm all subconscious of that. No, that's awesome. <laughs> I think it's great, seriously. No, I think it's a good thing. <laughs> subwoofer, see, there you go, Reverend Slim. Sorry, sorry, continue, <laughs> continue, continue. Yeah, so like, I mean, it, it, even when I'm just listening to music, I mean, it, yeah, you've got your hi-fi purists who are almost exclusively listening just to music on their hi-fi stereo system because that's what it's made for. Um, when I had the Aperion V8 T concert towers in here, mm -hmm. I mean, it just blew me away how detailed music came through those things, especially when I had some... You know, when I had the peach tree amp going through them, you know, that that's a 300 watt per channel amp. So like those big old towers can handle that much wattage. And like I could hear, you know, subtle intricacies of elect or acoustic guitars and vocals sounded, mm -hmm. you know, dead on center. So like I totally get it. But at the same time, um, I just I like just how I can feel it more when there's a sub, uh, when there's a subwoofer added to the system. Um, I appreciate the sonic qualities of tower speakers and if they can reach down low, but, but I, I do, I do like just that extra little oomph, that extra little body that a subwoofer provides, even when I'm just strictly listening to music, 
So that's just me personally. Um, but I, you know, I get it. A lot of music doesn't really need to go below 40 Hertz. Um, and it, and it still sounds spectacular. So really you need a subwoofer if you're watching movies and stuff, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I personally like all of it now that yeah. I'm getting into home theater more mm -hmm. and I appreciate it more. I have respect for it more. You, you know, I think we can all learn from one another. And so I'm generalizing. So, you know, if, if this, if you're a two channel guy and this is not you, you know, I'm not speaking for everybody, but just generally speaking, what I've found is that the home theater guys are more like into the techy side of it. You know, you have to buy all the stuff. We do room correction, adding subs, like you have to have subs, right? So that's kind of a requirement for home theater. If you really want a nice home theater, sure. you really need to have subs. Like there's movies and they're going to have deep bass. There's it's there, right? And then, so what ends up happening is because you have subs and you have lots of speakers, now you need something to kind of manage all those things, right? You, you know, to try to do all that without any DSP is very difficult, right? Now, I'm sure you probably could, maybe, I don't know, but you're going to have some issues that are going to be difficult to address with regards to how do you blend the sub with the mains. And it's not just two, you got to blend it with all the speakers, mm -hmm. you know? So it's that, um, you know, a lot of times you have different place, uh, different seats, you have multiple seats. So we need to use DSP, right? Uh, whereas sometimes what I find with the two channel guys, they, you know, if they spend a lot on it, they also spend a lot on room treatment. Mm -hmm. And so that's the other part. So they may try to do it in a physical way. They're going to, they're going to angle that speaker perfectly, right? They're going to, they're going to mess with that. They're going to move their seat like, Right, half an inch, you they're know, so they put the speakers in halfway into the room, and then the best part is there's only going to be one seat. <laughs> yes, one <laughs> seat. Right, you do it. You do all that, and it's just one seat. So is this like your time away from the family? Leave me alone. I'm yeah, listening. What you know, kind of hey, thing, or I don't you know. know. What See, you know what like I mean? Lovely life. One one chair. That's it. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, there's just they're both trying to arrive at the best possible sound that they can get. It's just that, you know, physical. So basically what I'm saying is if you could do what they do mm -hmm. and use sound treatment, proper positioning, put yourself in the best possible place, put your speakers in the best possible place, then DSP doesn't have to do very much. Right. The DSP. Well, it still has to do stuff, but it doesn't have to do as much as if you just ah, random randomly put stuff everywhere. Your room's untreated. Um, so yeah, you need a little bit of both. And um, they can also learn about DSP because I've been to uh, uh, an audiophile guy. I went to his uh, office. He had a $100,000 system. And uh, number one, the speakers were switched. So right and left were switched. So I was like, um, yeah, we got to fix that real quick. You know? <laughs> and, then, and then there was a, a big old null, right? And he has like, he had like all this like room treatment, like bass traps, all this. And all we needed to do, just because I had a mic, I could easily tell that if we just move the seat, his listening position, a foot and a half forward, he's no longer in the null. Mm -hmm. Wow. You have all this bass back, right? So it's just a little bit of both, right? You can, we can learn from one another. I don't think uh, it's one or the other. Anyway, yeah. that's my take. That's my take. Um, yeah. And then and then there's that that thing that I know Aaron's Aaron's here so I can mention it. Um mm -hmm. half of half of these guys that are audiophiles don't really know what they're hearing. So like they're just buying it to buy it and it's a status symbol. It's like, oh yeah. I spent fifty thousand, sixty thousand on a pair of um what is it, B and W diamond whatever, five hundreds, I don't know what the model is, but like yeah. you know, <clears throat> and when you go, did, like Joe, when we were at the show, the show in, uh, what is it, Long Beach or whatever, and we were showing at the show, like some of these speakers, man, that just, they're what, $10,000, $20,000? Yeah. I'm like, these things sound so awful. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, like, I'm like, you're actually you trying to sell these? I'm like, God, I hope nobody's buying these things. And so, you know, half of it is like, you know, the turntable that levitates the record. Did you see that at the show? Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. All right. Cool. Dude, that's that, crazy. Did everybody need it? <laughs> So, yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, it's, I think 
like I'm saying, we could all learn from one another. It doesn't have to be one or the other. You know, of course, they buy the expensive speakers. They only have to buy two. So a lot of times they'll buy the most expensive speakers they can afford. That's usually our recommendation too, right? Uh, buy the best speakers you can afford, but it's different when you have to buy two versus when you have to buy yeah, true. You know, 16. I'll, I'll and the amplification for all of them and the processing and everything kind of goes up exponentially. But in the same token, a lot of the two channel guys that are really serious about it, they spend equally as much. And they just spend it on less equipment and just higher end equipment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, those even, cable, even interconnects, right? Cable the risers, lighters. risers are expensive. Well, I was just saying, like, even like uh, XLRs, right? And you got to multiply that by however many speakers you are. So, oh, yeah. So, my pre pro, right? I have 11 XLRs. And if I'm mm -hmm. buying fancy ones, even the cheaper ones that are like yeah. 30, 40 dollars, 20, 30, 40. Yeah. That adds decent up. Decent quality is like 400 bucks. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so, absolutely. So, yeah. Um, but then at the same time, like, you know, I think what Joe, what Joe is saying is, is, is great. You know, buy speakers that start off good and can EQ well for home theater. And then you'll have, you'll pretty much have a decent experience. I mean, I had those Martin Logan towers. And then once Joe did whatever magic beans with the subwoofer, I was like, Oh, I can get rid of these towers and go to smaller speakers. Yeah. That's, and, uh, that's you know? the other thing too, is it's, it's not easy, right? So if you're a two channel guy and then you say, okay, let's try out this DSP thing. Let's see what a mini DSP can do. And you, you can go in and you're like, Mm, this is kind of hard, right? It's not that straightforward. It's not like, oh, you just plug it in and then there's nothing to physically move around. It's all on, on the computer, right? Like, how do I, what do I do now, right? So it's it's difficult. And I can imagine that maybe some of them had bad experiences with subs. Maybe they had a sub that didn't integrate well. Maybe they had a sub that wasn't, was very boomy. Yeah. And that doesn't sound good. I wouldn't like that either. And I think, I think if you're a true audio guy, doesn't matter if it's two channel, home theater, you're going to appreciate good sound. Whether it's a two channel system that sounds really good, you're going to say, man, that sounds really good. And if that two, uh, two channel guy comes to your home theater and it's set up well, oh, man, that's pretty good. Right. So I don't think we're going to disagree so much on what awesome sound is. All right, everybody, we do the Daily Hi-Fi podcast every Monday, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So make sure you join up to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash daily hi-fi, and we will see you there for the big show every Monday. Yeah.